Hi everybody, this is Leah Martin from Running Remote and today we're going to be talking about the six different types of remote workers you'll encounter when building a remote first company. Not all remote workers are created equal. This is one of those things that is really important to recognize when you are either building a remote team or scaling one. We have a lot of weird different people and maybe they wouldn't like to be called weird, but I'm gonna stick with it anyways. <laughs> a lot of different weird people inside of our company and we have employees in 43 different countries all over the world. Different cultures, different genders, different racial backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, and also different personalities, which is actually what we're going to touch on today. People are very different, and people from different cultures are even more different. So you really need to adapt to those different types of cultures if you're going to really scale a remote team and make it world-class. So in my opinion, especially inside of remote companies, people think, oh, well, they need to adapt to us. And I don't think so, that, so at all. What we need to do is actually adapt to them. So we're gonna get into this, but before we do that, again, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Igor hurts me every single time that I do not tell everyone that 89% of people are not subscribed to this YouTube channel that watch these videos. So please subscribe, you're saving my life. So the first type of remote worker that you are going to encounter are what we like to call night owls. There are a lot of remote workers that actually love to work at night. And particularly, at least inside of our company, it's generally developers that really love to work at night, but we found them in almost every single department inside of our company. And it's important to be able to recognize that it doesn't matter whether you work from nine to five, you actually just need to be able to get your work done. So as long as you're putting in the time, I don't care if it's from eight to four in the AM or the PM, doesn't bother me at all. Just make sure that you're actually working and that you are putting the time in and also, very importantly, showing up to meetings. Everyone has to agree on a time to actually meet to be able to work on stuff. Outside of that, be the night owl, doesn't bother me at all. Second thing is overthinkers. Uh, we have a lot of these people inside of our company and they're not necessarily bad. If I have a real serious problem that I need to send to somebody, I'll send it to an overthinker because I could guarantee you they're going to think about it way more than I am. I'm more of a like ready, fire, aim type of person. I just do things uh, and if someone needs something actually done, they usually send it to me. I'm the underthinker, and a lot of other people in the company are overthinkers. So how you deal with them is you make sure that you can provide them very clear goals on how to achieve something. So I need you to produce a result in seven days, or I need you to produce a result in the next hour. There's a concept called the Pareto Principle, which means a task expands into the time that you have to complete it. So whether it takes you seven days to complete a task or a month to complete a task, usually you'll actually complete it at the same level because people take a lot more time if they know that they have a lot more time. So how I best deal with overthinkers is I restrict their ability to actually produce a result within a certain amount of time. And that usually allows for a much better action oriented employee. And if you have some of those people inside of your company too, try it out, it definitely works. Next up is we have the ghost readers, the people that uh, seem to read an email, you know that they've read it, you know that they've actually looked at your Slack notification, they, you know that you've lo they've looked at your team notification and yet they never <laughs> respond or they respond when they are good and ready. Now, I'm actually one of those people and this is something that I've really been trying to improve on where I will not look at an email email or a task or, or a Slack notification, unless I'm going to respond to it, I don't actually respond to it. And this has been difficult for me sometimes because sometimes I just like to click on stuff and then I'm like, oh man, this is gonna take me 30 minutes to respond to. Maybe I'm just gonna not bother with that right now. But you need to actually respond to it. The way that you help these people is again, you need to actually create smaller tasks for them. So don't write them out like, 
an entire novel in an email or on Slack, have a very clear, broken down, biteable breakdown of what you want them to do and how you want them to respond. I love one line email responses. If I can break everything down to a one line email response, you will get a response from me way faster than I have if I have to work on it for 20 minutes to actually respond to you. So ghost readers, get rid of them um, by actually focusing them on providing much clearer, faster responses to anything that you want done. The next one is what we call Slack slackers, the people that are really not, and again, this is for only people that use Slack. Maybe we should have like team slackers, but the alliteration really didn't work on that one. So we've decided to call it Slack slackers. These are the people that don't actually respond to messages effectively. So they're the people that will either write out a novel as an example when they're trying to communicate with you on Slack or they will demand a response from you very, very quickly inside of Slack. And again, since we are primarily an asynchronous organization, meaning we communicate not necessarily in a synchronous live way, but we try to minimize live communication and instead focus on asynchronous communication. The Slack slacker that's always after you saying, hey, I need to actually get a response to something right away in the next three minutes. Those are generally the people that don't necessarily work that well inside of our company. So it's important to be able to, number one, clearly define for them, hey, just because you sent me a message on Slack does not necessarily mean that I'm gonna respond in the next five minutes. I might have my Slack off. I personally Slack zero just as much as I inbox zero every single day. So it's gonna take at minimum 24 hours to be able to respond to me. And if it is an absolute emergency, people have my cell phone number. I also inside of Slack, and this is another really cool extra tip, I have a code word, which is Liam emergency. So if you type in Liam emergency, it will actually call my phone, it will send a push notification to my computer. It's the only thing that actually pops out of everything else, but it's only used in the cases of emergencies. And I train all of my staff to be able to interact with me in that way so that we don't have to very quickly respond to things as quickly as possible. Next up is the jack of all trades employee. Now, the jack of all trades people are the people that are always kind of, they do a little bit of everything, right? They do a little bit of marketing, they do a little bit of sales, a little bit of support, a little bit of development. They can do everything. And unfortunately, sometimes that <laughs> makes them actually do nothing inside of the business. A lot of jack of all trades will kind of start projects, but not necessarily finish them. They will uh, do a whole bunch of things relatively badly instead of doing two to three things really, really well. The way that you control for a jack of all trades is really have them focus on a particular set of things and then also follow up with very quantitative KPIs to be able to make sure that everyone is doing exactly what they are doing and that all of those tasks are being checked up on so that the jack of all trades knows, hey, I need to actually accomplish this and really get it over the line as opposed to just kind of getting it over the line a little bit. The last person is the person that we lovingly call the synchro sunshines. They're just like the slack slackers, but they're actually a little bit worse. They're the people that will jump in and give you Zoom meeting calls literally like five minutes before you're supposed to show up for something. And then they'll get super frustrated when you didn't actually show up for that Zoom call, or they'll try calling you, they'll try messaging you on Slack. They've always got this concept of, hey, we've gotta to go to a video call as much as humanly possible. Inside of remote teams, going to video calls, AKA synchronous communication, is not the way to actually build a fast moving organization. If people need synchronous communication inside of the company, that means that they are more dependent 
upon other people in order to make decisions. Everyone should be as independent as humanly possible. I always tell people, don't ask me what to do, tell me what you did. Any decision that you make inside of the business, you can usually reverse within 24 hours. It's not that big of a deal. And forcing everyone to go to synchronous communication really slows down deep work inside of that organization. Work gets done when you actually can execute on the work yourself, as opposed to having meetings about the work. So super important to be able to make sure that everyone's on that same page and minimizing synchronous work is so critical to having a successful remote organization. So those were my tips. If you have any other tips, put them down in the comments below. I'd love to be able to hear about some other remote work types that maybe I would not know about. And if you're down there already, why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel and uh, actually like this video? Because that would make me much, much happier. And you'd be able to watch all of my other videos that I have on here, because we talk about this stuff all day long. Other than that, see you next video.